Promotional consideration paid for by the following. This is Del Morgado. Hello, this is Andrew Chalmers, the writer and doctor in Doctor Who Dark Journey. <laughs> Hello, this is Dr. Steve. Hi, this is Tim Rose, who played Admiral Ackbar in Return of the Jedi. Good evening, folks. This is James Duval. This is Jeremy Taggart from the Taggart and Torrance podcast. Hey, what's the sitch? This is Kim Possible. Hi, Puddins. Amanda Cowell here. Hey, I'm DJ Jenny Rock. And I'm Neil Young from Neil and Johnny Drink in the Park, Johnny's best friend. Hey, this is Andrew Cassess. Uh, Worms are from Revenge of the Nerds. This is Sean Gunn. Hey, everyone. It's Tammy Stronach from The NeverEnding Story. Hi, this is Robert Carradine. Hey, this is Loki Quinn Cosplay. Hey, what's cracking, y'all? It's your boy J-Rock. You know, I'm Siri Ira Igra. You're listening to Droids Canada Podcast. Huh? Enjoy your chimichanga. <laughs> This podcast is a proud member of the Points of Interest Podcast Network. Visit us today at POIPodcast.com. You're listening to the Electronic Media Collective Podcast Network. Yeah, it's a mouthful. For more great shows like the one you're about to enjoy, visit ElectronicMediaCollective.com. And now, our feature presentation. Warning. Listener discretion is advised. That means there's a lot of fucking swearing. Hello. <laughs> Learning how technology works here. So I am now behind the scenes. Toronto Fan Expo. Um, I have found that Joker guy. Now, some people say it's insanity. Or some people say it's being eccentric. Right. I think it is being an artist. How do you feel about that? I think it can sometimes end up as a mixture. Um, actually, it always ends up as a mixture, but sometimes it can end up too far in one direction or too far in the other. Um, I, my preference is too far in the artistic direction. Um, however, too far in the insanity direction works for some people. So would that um, actually be a different style of art? Yes, most definitely. It, it will become like something different. It, it becomes something different. Like uh, if I'm creating a picture, for instance, um, and things are going a little too straight you know i'm coloring in too inside the lines a little a little too much and i'm not leaking out there i feel like you lose something so you kind of gotta splash it outside the lines when you get the chance see that could go for so many different aspects in life oh my god yes oh it can get intense but then like i said some people can take it too far outside the lines mm -hmm. and that just becomes a, a, a whole it's still art and, but it, it becomes an issue where you have to explain mm -hmm. your art so as a true artist, do you ever, looking back, do you ever think that you have crossed that line into insanity? A few times, I would say most definitely I've crossed a few lines. But it's okay. It, like I said, it's okay as long as you're given the chance to explain the reason. A lot of people say that, if you have to explain the art, is it is it art anymore? It's like if you have to explain the joke, is it still a joke? Yes. I yes. had a, I had a uh, some horrible experiences with that already uh, already this weekend, where you just kind of throw something and they don't really get it. Like yeah. um, like I had a situation that happened last week where I was driving and my I blew my tire. Okay, oh. and uh, you know I had a I had a nice little brisk walk home because oh. it was late and I didn't want to wake up anyone. And uh, so then for a day, I was riding a bike. And um, do you know why bikes don't stand up by themselves? Well, because they only have two wheels? I don't know. Because they're too tired. That's, that's, that's funny. <laughs> it's funny. I get it. It's good, but it's kind of like, are, are you a father? Oh, you know it. Yeah, that's a daddy joke all the way. That is right. That is right. One zero zero. Now, let's get back to your artwork. So you are a feature of uh, Artist Alley here at Fan Expo in Toronto. I have met you over the years, mm -hmm. here and there, at all the different shows and different conventions, and you do some sick work. 
some absolute sick work. Thank you very so much. myself, I know you as the artist. Right. But you're also that Joker guy. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes that's a hard line to draw for some people. Some people don't get it. Some people see the cosplay and the, the, the character I'm playing and entirely negate the art because of that. You know what I mean? Like See, people just also, look past it. I consider it not as the cosplay. This is part yeah. of your what you do. That's how I like to think of it. I like to think of it as it's it, they're connected. There's a very very big connection. The strong the connection. Two. Yes. Oh my goodness. As an actual human being, I'm exceptionally introverted, and I don't know that I could be out talking and selling my artwork as Chris. I don't think Chris could be here mm. as well as I could. And I feel like I, I would have lost something by not stepping that line. Like I said, splashing outside the lines a little bit. So it's almost like flicking the switch because I kind of do the same thing. I grew up a very introverted person, like could never talk to a girl, could never right. kind of, being that kind of shy, introverted person. Right. But then when you create character, you flip, flick on a switch and you are someone who you just might not be. Someone who maybe yeah. a couple little aspects in real life you may have wanted to have boom, I have now flicked on that switch and I can be that person. And when you get it, it just opens up doors. It really does. It really does. I mean, sometimes it just helps me. It helps me get out of the shell, I suppose. Exactly. Now, now, but I want to relate to you and make certain that I'm clarifying this very clearly. Some people step outside too far. And some people like to just, like, okay, yes, I play a character. I play a character a lot. Right, but if I see something that I don't agree with online, but the character would agree with it, that doesn't mean I'm going to go with the character. There's still a very exactly. big portion of Chris in here. Yes, you know what I mean. Now I know a lot of people who have stepped that line, and oh my God, does that make me angry? Because then people come to me and assume that oh, because you play the Joker, you must agree with this and you must believe this. No, that's that's not how it works. It's acting. It's it's a character. Exactly. I can easily step outside of it. Very simple. Mm -hmm. and, and make it very clear to people that you have to step outside of it sometimes. <laughs> so getting back to the artwork, like I said, I've seen a bunch of stuff that you've done, and it is like ridiculously amazing. So you are doing commissions at uh, Fan Expo right now. Uh, what other? Do you have any other conventions lined up, or where can people find you to be able to see what you have created? Well. Online. I mean, you search that Joker guy, and you're going to find me. Mm -hmm. um, there's no doubt. Um, I have an Etsy. I have my Facebook, my Instagram. That's the best way to possibly connect with me. Mm -hmm. um, direct message me and ask. Um, I'm, I'm basically always open for commissions, um, but I do backlog from time to time. So sometimes mm -hmm. I'll get... It doesn't happen a, a whole lot. Not as much as I'd like, mm -hmm. I guess. But it does happen that I backlog... So it might take a while sometimes. Have, but have you ever done, like, do you do custom pieces If somebody says, could you create this kind of something for me for, let's say, a tattoo or for something for my wall? Like, are you able to take their idea and kind of create it into your concept of that, art? That is basically what I've made my entire career as an artist out of, is taking what's in your head and putting it on a piece of paper. Um, no matter what it is. And not even paper. I mean, I do sculpting. I, I do, like, pretty much everything. So, yeah, I mean, I do portraits, caricatures, you know, absolutely anything you could think of that you want done, I can do it. And I'm very good at coloring outside of the lines there. Outside of the lines very. as well. The nice little twist oh. on that. So, um, I, you know what? I want to thank you for your time. I'm going to uh, jump over to a photo op now. So, oh. online, check out That Joker Guy. Legit. His artwork is sick. You want something done for a loved one? Check him out. His stuff, like I said, man, one of the best I've met in my years of doing Comic-Con. So man, here we have... That really does mean a lot. What's that? That means a lot. Thank hey, you very much. I'm an honest man, so... I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Joy's Canada. Hello, my name is Arnold, Arnold Braunschweiger, and I've been there to tell you about this fantastic new recording from the guys at AM Audio Media. It's called Doctor Who Dark Journey Series 2. Did you know that I was in the running to be the next Doctor Who, but I couldn't fit through the door at the TARDIS? It may be bigger on the inside, but I'm bigger on the outside! Timey Wimey! Timey Wimpy! Rose! Nikki! Get to the TARDIS! You... 
call yourself the silence. Will you sing like a fire boy when I finish with you? Get the hell out of my time stream! You will upgrade or you will be deleted. I've succeeded at all my careers, all my goals, all of them. I'm a three time world champion. You'll need an upgrade, Cyberman! Exterminate! Haha, <laughs> exterminate, exterminate! You're exterminated, motherfucker! <laughs> Hope you left enough room for my son's screwdriver, because I'm gonna ram it up your You exterminated, motherf- Go to warp 5, face us on stun, place the sheep! What? what do you mean this is not Doctor Who? I saw it, on television! <laughs> Doctor Who, Dark Journey Series 2. After you listen to episode 1, I guarantee you'll be back.